aside from the show, this was a car accident, a very serious issue that I feel like, you know, you should have at least reached out, put everything aside and say, you know, send a text message, a, a simple, hey, I'm, uh, I'm so sorry. I hope you're doing well. Mitch, what would you have done? There are certain people where I have nothing against you, but I also have nothing for you oh. either. To me, what I consider moral is different to that. And that's but it's how a big statement. It. It's a big statement that you made to question my morals, and I wouldn't expect a friend to question my morals because you know well, me better than that. We're on a debate that. show. <laughs> we debate each other's ideas and each other's thoughts. Um, yeah. We don't. I don't want anyone to debate my character. Hey, it's a brotherhood. Woohoo! Do you think there's a possibility that Melissa reaching out could have mended? this fractured relationship. Do you think that could have been a possibility? That's a good point. Theresa's daughter got into a car accident. That's your niece, you yes, love her, she's of course, okay. And I'm so happy But what she's if okay. like you needed, would you reach out to of her? Course. Can you talk to her? Right now, no, no one is on talking terms with anyone. To come, Maybe that's where we start. Well, to come after level. my marriage, for some reason, she's never been happy for us. She's never wanted to support us. They've had this up and down relationship that we've all watched on TV for years. Uh, Melissa, you were there when, don't you love to throw up that you were there when Teresa was in prison and you were there to watch Gia and the kids and you were this great aunt? Where is that great aunt now? Where are you now? Exactly. Where are you now when she, when you're really needed? Because what would, okay, let me, let me just say this. Let's say the worst would have happened. Then what? Then it's the, oh my God. You know, oh my God, and and listen, I, I just feel like when it comes to issues like this, this this is when the reality and the reality TV really comes in. You know, I could see why Melissa is hesitant to reach out. I'm not close to any of my family. My dad died in 2019. His family tried to take our inheritance, which we had to go to court to take back that inheritance. And so since my dad's been buried, there's this been this distance and... um boundary that I set that I don't communicate with them. I would love to reach out to them, but I am afraid that there would be ramifications or safety concerns or anything. So I, I respect the boundary. To be honest, I, I think that's an interesting point, Izzy. I don't look at it quite the same. I think at the end of the day, when an accident happens, when something traumatic happens, there's always that love. That's what's more important. Love trumps all. Any negativity, any issues, there's that love. And when something trauma traumatic happens to me, that changes things. With ter with Teresa, her daughter, your niece, I do think she should reach out. And on top of that, I think Melissa kind of not using this moment to look beyond it, sitting in that interview and saying, Teresa's always been jealous of her. Teresa isn't happy for her. They're jealous of her business and talking negatively. We need to come together. Like this is a big thing that's happened that affected the safety of her family someone she grew up seeing mm -hmm. and i think there needs to be that underlying compassion to be real to be realistic though i think that in a situation like this melissa might be might be one of the last people that teresa would want to hear from I don't think in a moment like this I don't think because that's... the narrative will perhaps be that Melissa's only contacting us so that she can be on record for contacting us, or she's contacting us and she doesn't have the, she's she's not doing it from her heart. She's doing it so that she's able to say she did it. So the narrative could be switched in the worst way. I don't think it could be switched in the worst way. And it, it doesn't matter. Why do you care so much about how you're perceived about reaching out by someone? You should care about the care you have for your niece as an aunt. If they take, if someone looks at it that way, except, but I don't think checking in on someone after an accident, I don't think there's anything negative that you can possibly perceive. But even if that's on your radar, you shouldn't even think about that for a second. Your first point of, your first point should be care. I, I appreciate the realness in how, how you, Izzy, would say mm -hmm. you perceive in, in this situation. But right. at the same time, I just don't think it's a hard choice. And I guarantee you that Teresa Judice would have picked up the phone and sent a text, a, a call, something. I'm sorry that this happened to Antonia, um, you know, sending you guys well wishes. Because like Victor said, what, what can you say? 
What can you say bad about that? Oh, I can't believe she texted and about this accident. This is the first time I've heard from her. No, come on now. We're talking about life here. Mitch, what would you have done in this situation? If I'm not, if I'm not in a good space with someone, I do keep my distance regardless of what's going on. I just don't have the instincts to reach out even if something has happened and it's tragic. I don't know. I think it might be... The evil Scorpio antennas, maybe? Not the evil I don't Scorpio. Say not good. <laughs> Hopefully when, not. When you're not good with someone and you, you're not going to reach out in an instance like that, is it something as simple as, you know, we had a little argument and we haven't spoke, so I'm not reaching out and I heard you had a car wreck? If there is a deep-rooted betrayal falling out, there are certain people where I have nothing against you, but I also have nothing for you. Oh. either and so that's probably the, I, that's where i am like i don't have anything against you but i have absolutely nothing for you either so that's probably the stance that i would take with that but i would probably just be on record praying that for the best what do you mean be, so you, what do you mean be on record praying for the best just praying i'll just I'll pray for the best for the situation but i don't yeah. know if i would reach out yeah i really don't agree with that well, you can't disagree this, with what what I would do. This is what I would do. Well, I I, I can disagree on the. But you can do something different. I can't I do something ask. different. I yeah. just disagree, I just disagree <laughs> with the morality. But listen, I think the point. I think the point. Yeah, though, but I, is, my my point. This, here's, my, here's my here's my here's my point. Here's my point. Let me respond to that really really quickly because this is as much. I I you are my best friend, and I really oh. appreciate you. But at the same time, at the same time, just because you can think someone has done something wrong does not mean that there does not mean that erases everything good about them. It overrides it. And my right. point was when me and you have arguments, I don't just look at you negatively at those things I'm feeling in the moment. I always remember the positive things. So I think it's important to realize I don't view people as good and bad. There is that gray in the middle. And just because you can think someone has done something wrong does not mean that there does not mean that erases everything good about them. It overrides it. Izzy, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you <laughs> understand what he's saying? I don't want to be involved. Yeah, I'm curious to see what you think about this, it seems. Um, I get where what Victor's saying, but I also understand Mitch uh, in a way that he... You know, so this is why I don't want to be involved. Anyways, I understand where Mitch is coming from in not wanting to reach out. If that's what Mitch is comfortable with and he's just going to pray and wish him well, but through a prayer, I think that's enough. Um. Yeah, but, but, but I guess what you're yeah, and I think it's enough too, and I, and I think and I think that when it I think that when it comes to those boundaries and when it comes to questioning someone's morality, which was a very big statement, Victor, that you directed at me, when we question someone's morality, we shouldn't judge people's choices. Like Melissa, she's made a choice, and it I would think it's a very challenging choice, and it just is. like what I've said just now, it is a tough, you know thing to say, but we gotta tell the truth about how we feel. Melissa Gorga and the truth? Huh? I think we we all have different morals and and fundamentals of how we act and how we treat people and how we look at things. To me, what I consider moral is different to that. For me, there has to come a place where you put in certain situations your ego aside, and that's but it's how a big I statement. It. It's a big statement that you made to question my morals, and I wouldn't expect a friend to question my morals because you know. Well, me we're on a debate show I... where we're meant to. I talk. know, but we debate I'm each the other's. Aside. We, we, de <laughs> we debate each other's ideas and each other's thoughts. Uh, yeah. We don't. I don't want anyone to debate my character. I'm not, I'm not saying that's anything about your character because my my character is undebatable. But, Right. I'm not debating your character, but I'm debating the morality within the argument that you're presenting. Within me. Is, with, I, I, don't, I don't know that's... if that's how you treat everyone. This, this is the idea you're presenting. This is what you're saying. To me, 
I look at the Bible, I look at religion, and it says to forgive over and over and over again. And that's what I consider moral. And anything outside of that, I don't, that's just my opinion. Well, listen, everyone looking in, let us know, do you think Melissa made the right decision? We'll see you again next time. Don't forget your perspective matters. Bye. Okay, good job, everybody. <laughs> Melissa's old nose, Gabrielle, makes it very clear that what Teresa was allegedly asking her to do, the things that she was asking this Twitter account to do, it was becoming dark. Let's say she did, or she was going to bring this up, um, calculate it or whatever. It was going to get brought up anyway. It was in the media. It was being talked about. Just like Teresa said herself, I got, I got arrested. I went to jail. I gave birth. I've lost all my money. I regained it. I got a divorce. I lost both my parents. Name something that she's produced. That's everything that just happened in her life.